Packaging and sustainability. I mean, I don't think that you can think of any other company better than the one with that great smile on its box. Uh, what, how does that improve? Where does that go uh, from here to sustainability? To talk about that, please welcome the Director of Worldwide Sustainability and Social Responsibility at Amazon, Kara Hurst. Thank you, Kara. Thank you Thanks. very much. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, we're going to start with a, a short video to get us going. wanted to start with that. Um, at Amazon, our culture really values working hard, but also having fun. So I thought I'd start with some of the fun around packaging. Um, very happy to be here today. Thank you to GreenBiz for uh, having us at Amazon and, and hosting this wonderful conference. Um, we are really excited to share with you some of what we've been working on in packaging. And I wanted to start by saying I'm going to talk about three different things in packaging. So one is that the, fundamentally, the experience around the value of packaging is changing. Secondly, the customer experience with packaging is changing and how customers see packaging. And thirdly, the supply chains and the value chains and how products move and therefore the impacts on packaging is changing. And the good news about all of these changes and some of the things that we're seeing in packaging, and we all need some good news these days, is that um, you know, really what this drives for us is a better customer experience, it drives cost out of the business, and it has massive potential positive sustainability impacts. So what's exciting about all of that is I think some of the changes that we're seeing um, are really great for packaging, but they're great for us as sustainability experts, they're great for our customers. And I wanted to start by just sharing a little bit uh, with all of you about you know, the overview of retail. So retail, as, as I think many of you know, is also going through its own fundamental shifts. Um, when you look at the global retail industry, a $22 trillion industry, roughly, um, you see steady increases in retail, but you see massive growth in e-commerce. Um, so that's all of the online activity that, uh, that many of us are engaged in. Um, whether it's shopping or downloading content, um, you know, getting information, but really the e-commerce um, activity it, you see is growing um, roughly 25% versus a 6% growth for retail. So when you think about that and think about what that means for packaging, and we think about how we look at that roughly 1.6 to $3 trillion of that cost of goods that is packaging, really what we start to ask, because we're a customer-obsessed company, is what is the value of that to our customers? And how do our customers see packaging? How do they look at it as we continue to make shifts in how retail is happening? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, several of the initiatives that we have underway around packaging at Amazon. 
And our goal in starting these initiatives and working on them um, for the couple years that we have is really to think about you know, bringing together collaboratively how we can partner with our vendors, our sellers, but really everyone who's producing products and think about how do we share what we know about online shopping, what we know about e-commerce, what we know about this transformation of packaging value to people who are producing products and also moving them around the world. So at Amazon, we have several initiatives. One you saw in the video called Frustration Free Packaging. So this is a great initiative. Amazon's been at it for a number of years um, where we, that's kind of our, our, our gold standard. Um, we have Frustration Free Packaging and, and our CEO, Jeff Bezos, coined a term called Rap Rage, right? It's when you cannot get the product out. And I always joke that that video should be accompanied not by a, a a funny soundtrack, but by a soundtrack of like a screaming child, right, who just, who just wants that toy. And thinking about how do we eliminate that for our customers, um, frustration-free packaging is about no heated clamshells, no twist ties, 100% recycled packaging, no printing on the box. And we aim to have all of our products in frustration-free packaging. But we also know that that might not make sense for every package. So we have another program called Shipped in Own Container. And shipped and owned container is where we work with the vendor to create a package that does not need an overbox. So many of you probably have ordered products and you get a box within a box and you think, why do, why do I need all this? I don't need the extra box. I don't need the, what we call dunnage surrounding it to protect it, especially if you've ordered a case of paper towels or a case of diapers. You don't need the extra packaging. So shipped and owned container is something where we work. We've created a standard that we've open sourced and we work to test that product to make sure it arrives to our customer undamaged, but can go in its primary box. And this, again, is a shift in customer expectation. So customers get a box of paper towels or a box of diapers on their doorstep without packaging around it, a label just on it. But what it does is it minimizes the waste for them. And the product arrives, because we've certified it, SIOC, or shipped and owned container, it arrives undamaged to them with minimal waste. And the third is what we call prep-free packaging. And we have a lot of information about this on our websites. We have toolkits, and we're, we're working with all of our vendors. And this is really just to some packages, especially you know, particular products, might need a little bit more uh, of protection around them. But what we want to do is move it through our supply chains without a lot of additional prep and additional packaging that we would need to add to it. So all of these initiatives are about getting a product to a customer in a protective fashion, minimizing waste, making it very easy open, eliminating that wrap rage, and at the end stage of it from a life cycle assessment perspective, also making sure that we're using the most sustainable materials possible. So I want to talk a little bit about, again, I said we're going to talk about how retail is transforming. And this is really, I think, as, as consumers, as customers, people in the world, you know, you experience these kind of products traditionally on a, on a brick and mortar retail shelf. And there are a lot of reasons for the packaging as you see it here. So this packaging has to attract the customer's eye. It has to allow the product to stand upright in a fashion that keeps the product upright. That's why you have those twist ties. A lot of times there are theft protection devices embedded in the packaging. And additionally, it's the one opportunity to integrate and engage with the customer that experience about how would you use this packet, this product. Um, in toys in particular, you know, what is the experience of this toy? You've got to educate the customer, you've got to engage them, you've got to have them understand, you know, what is this toy about and how would you use it? But I would say that the toy industry in particular has been going to one of our, our great partners in really rethinking packaging, particularly as you shift to, to shopping online. And when you think about that and think about the opportunity, the experience of shopping online, you experience the product in a wholly different way. So thinking about the product, you can dive into the details of the product. You can rotate the product. You can look at it in multi-dimensions. You can zoom in on aspects of it. You can possibly even watch a video, a true experience of someone playing with the product. So just, just to think about, again, shifting your perspective on where packaging is going, the packaging that surrounds that product is not of any value when you purchase a product online. Right? You want to get to the product quickly, and you want to have minimal waste. I'll offer one other example. This is a fantastic product from our partners and friends at P&G. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, as sustainability experts in the room are familiar with concentrated product. 
So on the shelf, this is a challenging product because it's much smaller. And we took this and we've been working with uh, our, the packaging team at P&G and started to think about what does that look like though in the environment? We took a hypothetical re-envisioned uh, detail page and said there's an opportunity to engage in a story about the sustainability aspects of this product. Where bigger doesn't equal better. Or concentrated product is just as effective. And I was thinking about this yesterday as well when we saw the presentation on trust. Another thing you see here, one, is you see videos experientially of how to use the product, but you also see customer ratings. And they'll tell you, customers trust other customers. People trust people, right? They're not gonna trust me to tell you the product, or as a corporation, a product is more, as equally effective. They'll trust other customers who say, this is a product that has a great experience. It is as effective as the other non-concentrated product. So there's lots of different ways as we shift here and we think about engaging people, engaging customers uh, in the experience of packaging, what that means in an e-commerce or online environment. I also said I would talk about supply chains and value chains and how product is moving. And there's a whole other long presentation that we could go into on this. But one thing to touch on here is, again, in the traditional retail environment, you're gonna see a product particularly probably move from its transportation, a truck, to a pallet. It'll be disaggregated into what they call a master pack, and then only as a single product when it's put on the shelf, right? That product generally remains vertically upright throughout that process, and the packaging is predetermined. When we have a product come into the Amazon fulfillment uh, network, we are disaggregating that product into a singular unit immediately. And then it is touched four times as much throughout our entire value chain that is, as it is in traditional brick and mortar. And so the interesting thing as you start to think about that packaging is what are the implications for that as a package may or a product may not always remain upright? What does it mean when it's handled many more times? What does it mean when the ultimate delivery of that is not on a shelf but maybe in a bag delivered by an Amazon delivery person on foot in one hour? So as we rethink all of the implications of how products are moving through our fulfillment network, packaging becomes important at every single part of this to think about how we deliver that product in a way that, again, provides a phenomenal customer experience. So just to wrap up, this is a quote from last year's share owner letter uh, that our CEO put out there. And we did talk in that letter about how we are going to approach sustainability differently at Amazon, how we as a technology company are going to put our technology, our scale, and our inventiveness to play at sustainability issues. So packaging is one of seven teams at Amazon working on sustainability. Um, we have kind of thought about sustainability in terms of how can we take all of the levers that are enabled by the products and services that we have at Amazon and how can we drive those to make the best changes in sustainability? How can we collaborate with everyone on packaging as we see these transformations in retail? And in closing, I just wanted to share with you around these initiatives that I talked about, frustration-free packaging, shipped in own container, prep-free. We have been at these for uh, under two years now. But one of the things to show you at the scale that we're operating, some of the impacts that these can have is that in 2016 alone, we took out 55,000 tons of packaging. So that is a huge number <laughs> at scale in one year to take out of the system. We looked at over a million products that we certified shipped in own container or frustration free. We took out 165 million over boxes. So this kind of effort, when we look at it and think about how we drive that through our fulfillment networks, has huge sustainability impact. It has great customer impact in terms of the waste received. And it has phenomenal possibilities for our business. So in closing, I would just invite all of you to join us. Our goal is to have every product that comes through our fulfillment network that is an Amazon product in these initiatives, in these kinds of packaging, uh, we are willing to collaborate and open to that and look forward to even better sustainability impact in the years to come. So thank you very much.